Hello guys and dolls, welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today we are taking a look at the Two Trees SP5, or the Sapphire Plus as it's been known in many lives, an entry level Core XY. But before we get started, roll those credits. Okay, so let's run down the stats on this machine to begin with. So we have a 300 by 300 by 330 build volume. It is a Core XY Bowden fed hot end with a dual drive remote mount uh, BMG clone. Uh, it does have a filament runout sensor, touch screen, no auto bed level, but the bones of this machine, really quite impressive. So let's start with the price. 399 US dollars to your door. So this is a budget level machine and it has to be reviewed in context of that, right? This isn't trying to challenge a Bamboo X1, a Prusa, a, you know, an Ender 7, an FL Sun V400. It's not trying to compete with those machines. It's trying to offer you an alternative at an entry level to get into the Core XY world. We'll take a look at some of the prints in a minute because we did some prints. We did a nice big vase. We did our 3D, our all-in-one 3D print test. We did our Benchy. We did our calibration cube. And the results are pretty good. That's not necessarily what's exciting about this machine. So first and foremost, out of the box, this machine prints, it works. It's not gonna set anybody's world on fire and it's not gonna set any national speed records. One of the main issues that I have with the machine, if I'm perfectly honest, is that I have been very spoiled in the last lots of machines that I have had because I am used to AC heated beds. This is a normal heated bed, and as a result, it does take a couple of minutes to heat up. I'd be lying if I said that wasn't very annoying, because everything else about this machine works pretty well. The park cooling is dual park cooling. It has two fans on the left, it has one fan on the left and one fan on the right. They do a pretty decent job at park cooling. It has a pretty decent job at overhangs as well. And if I was to describe the printer, in any, in sort of, if I was trying to sum it up in any real way, pretty decent is what I would say. Here's where things start to get interesting. You have dual linear rails on Z, dual linear rails on Y, and, and a single linear rail on the X. The reason that's important is it means that you could go onto Colts 3D and you can find a tool head called the diamond mount. The diamond mount allows you to do direct drive with an LDO motor, fit a variety of different tool heads from a Dragon to a V6 to, uh, to a traditional CR10 um, Mark 10 tool head. Also allows you to mount either a BL Touch or a Pinder sensor. And all of a sudden, what you've got is starting to edge its way more towards rat rigs and vorons. Now, I'll caveat that and say that there is some expandability problems, right? So this top section here is made out of formed sheet steel. So what you aren't gonna get is you aren't gonna get your, um, your aluminum extrusions, which mean you could easily mount panels to it. And what that means is that ABS is still gonna be possibly a little bit out of your reach unless you put this in a tent. Um, you do have easy access to the main board. So just here, there is, uh, there's four screws in the base and right there you can take those off and you get immediate access to the main board. So no flipping it upside down and having to undo everything just to be able to take a peek inside. The same again with a breakout board that's at the back here as well. Again, the bones of this machine really are quite nice. Um, the main problems for me have been the lack of an AC heated bed has unfortunately meant, it does take a little bit longer than I'm used to um, waiting for this thing to heat up. 
getting the bed level just right I have been spoiled in recent years. There have been a number of very, very good um, bed leveling solutions that have come out with BL touches and pinders and everything else and capacitives um, and the LiDAR that comes on the X1 Carbon, meaning that uh, I'm a little bit out of touch sometimes with, um, with, with how to do it old school where you're doing the piece of paper and you're you know, going around and tweaking all the, uh, tweaking all the bed knobs. So that was a little bit, you know, that, that was a little bit of a pain to get used to again. The main thing for me is what this machine represents when it comes to expandability. So we'll talk about that in a second, but before we get into that, let's take a look at the prints. Okay, so we start with the obligatory calibration cube. So if we get this to focus here, there we go. You can see that this has got some elephant's foot. So the elephant's foot is because the bed level is not bang on, contrary to what I thought it was. Um, you can see it's got just that extra bit of squish there. The extrusion is pretty good. It's pretty good. It isn't perfect. And a lot of that's because what we're dealing with is still a Bowden setup. It is a, it is, um, it's a dual drive. So there's a lot of torque and a lot of tension going into it, but it's having it's got all the resistance of that um, of of that Bowden tube to compete with. So not the world's most perfect extrusion, but to be clear, very very passable. We come on to the benchy, so you can see again we have some zitting here. That zitting is going to be a combination of retraction and extrusion. Uh, which needs to be tweaked. Um, retraction on a Bowden setup, it can be a real science to try and get to, get down to sort of to, to the root cause. Um, more than likely, what I'm going to end up doing is converting this to direct drive, and it will almost eliminate the issue altogether. But overhangs are pretty good, and the smokestack is nice and clean. It's not a bad benchy. First layer, as you can see, again, still a bit too much squish because you can barely see the text. It's not a bad benchy, it's just not the best benchy that this could probably do. So it does need some tweaking. We come on to the all-in-one 3D print test. So you can see that front layer there. Hold on. There we go. So that front layer there, not appalling. Not the best, but not appalling. Bridging is actually really good. I've measured the dimensional accuracy of these, also very good. You can see here we've got a little bit of wispiness and that wispiness is gonna be caused again by a retraction. If we take a look at overhangs, so we're all good here up to about 55 and we're all good here up until about 60. Um, even all the way up to about 70 is passable for an overhang. This here is 60, this here is 70. So a really, really good job on the, on the park call. And this has got dual blowers, so it's gonna, be, oh, it's gonna do a half decent job, but at the same time, it is also limited by the fact that, uh, that, it, is, um, that it is that Bowden setup. Last but not least, we have our vase mode. So vase mode is all about extrusion. There are no retractions in this, and as a result, the zitting on here, you can see these little zits, um, this is all caused by extrusion. That being said, most of the extrusion on here is really quite, um, it's really quite even, and it's done a good job. You can see once it started to get to the top here, it struggled a little bit, but overall, this is not a bad vase. This is almost full build volume of the, uh, of the printer. The printer will go up to 330 on the Z. This is about 320. So it's almost full print volume. Um, and I think it's done a really good job on that. So as you can see, at stock, the machine works. Does its job. It's not going to set the world on fire. It's not going to set any amazing speed records, but respectable results. I mean, a good benchy at 60 millimeters a second, relatively respectable overhangs. 
fairly consistent and pretty decent extrusion. A few zits and a few other bits and pieces, but that's not something you couldn't just go around and tweak the settings a little bit and get better results. There's two main drawbacks with this machine, in my opinion. One is that it is a remotely mounted dual drive, meaning that you are stuck with the Bowden setup. And the other is the lack of an AC heated bed. Those two things together are annoying. Um, those are the two upgrades that I would want to do first. Adding bed leveling is a nice to have. I may very well do it. I'm probably going to do a little series on upgrading this machine. So I'm going to stick a, I'm going to, I'm going to download the diamond mount from, uh, from Colts 3D, stick a BL touch on it, get everything mounted onto the tool head and then probably stick an AC heated bed onto it as well. And we'll give it a crack and we'll see how it fares after that. Um, I do think at stock, this machine is a really good way to get yourself into 3D printing. And if what you want is a pretty solid machine that's gonna give you a base to then modify, this is really it. We say, we say that when you get your first printer, it should probably be an Ender 3. And the reason for that is that it's relatively easy to fix and it's relatively easy to, you know, really relatively easy to find information online about different issues, different this, different that, and you can build on an Ender 3 but you'll always be left with a relatively inferior movement model, which is a Cartesian, a bed slinger. Bed is always moving backwards and forwards, which means when you get to models like this, they start to wave backwards and forwards when you try to do more speed. You're also gonna cost you to get a linear rail kit and everything else that you might wanna do to make your Ender 3 fly along you're still going to be stuck with the ender size and you go for an ender extender kit and everything else this is a really solid option once you once you convert this to a direct drive once you convert this to an ac heated bed you perhaps put clipper on it and you get this auto bed leveling you've got a really solid machine at that point you've got a very capable all linear rail, entry level core XY. The parts that you'd need to put a diamond mount on this probably amount to less than a hundred pounds, depending on what you have lying around in spare parts, depending on what you need to buy and where you need to buy it, and if you had the filament and everything else. But most people who are into 3D printing could do that upgrade for less than a hundred pounds throw in a silicone heated bed and a and an SSR okay maybe another 80 to 100 pounds there and all of a sudden you're still at around the 550 mark um, and you've got yourself a really capable machine at that point you'll have auto bed leveling and you'll have you know you'll have your direct drive with a with a with a LDO sort of orbiter um, direct drive um, tool head on there you'll have so you'll have an AC heated bed and a few other bits and pieces. And frankly, you don't need to do the AC heated bed upgrade. If it doesn't bother you that it takes a little while to heat up, then that's fine. I think I'm going to really enjoy making changes to this. I feel like this is going to be a nice little series that we do about how far can we push a machine? You know, how, how, how far can we customize it? And we're going to try to do our best to keep a track of all the costs involved and try to show you that if you took this machine as a base, where you could get to. Um, I think it's a really interesting entry level machine that gets you a solid Core XY body, that gets you functioning parts and a functional printer out of the box. But the potential it gives you to then continue to expand and build, I think is quite interesting. Um, so, if you'd like to see um, a little bit more, you'd like to see us go through the motions and see whether or not we can turn this into something a little bit special, then uh, by all means drop a like and a comment in the, uh, in the comments section and we will see where we get to. If I'm giving this a score out of 10, I would say that as it stands, I would give this a solid 7.5. 
there's definitely some tuning that's required when it comes to um, when it comes to extrusion and flow rates. Um, I really don't like the re remote mounted um, BMG clone. That uh, that is a missed opportunity in my opinion. They could have, with relative ease, printed and or they could have in fact made a bracket that meant this was direct drive. And if it was direct drive out of the box. I would actually say that this was easily a solid eight and a half, maybe even a nine. You know, this is this is not going to be a machine that immediately starts to let you down and break. But um, but there we have it, guys. So don't forget to like and subscribe. Keep an eye on the channel because we'll be featuring this a little bit more with some modifications when they come up. Catch you on the next video. See you later.